Well, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to the newest episode of Car Talk with Mike DiPaolo. Today, I think we need to talk about tenanted properties, tenants, investment properties, and whatnot, and the problems that are happening with them right now. Okay, so a lot of people don't know the rules about tenancy. The fact is, is that tenants have more rights than anything. In Ontario, in Canada, um, it's pretty brutal. So if a tenant doesn't pay your rent, you have um, to serve them with some papers. They can respond to the papers. Um, and, and 10s and 11s, all these forms can be found on the landlord tenant board. So if you're a landlord right now and looking for these forms, go on the landlord tenant board. There's lots of information for you about it. it tells you how to serve people if they haven't paid your rent, how to go after them. And the thing is, is that once you serve them and they pay rent, then that form is now invalid because now they've paid, but then they could be late the next month and they could be late the next month and you'd have to keep going through this. Oftentimes now what we're seeing is people aren't paying rent for months. There are some people who haven't paid rent for six months, seven months, eight months. So now is not a good time to be a landlord if you have bad tenants. Um, and it's always hard to tell what a tenant's gonna be like unless you do your due diligence when renting them. So please do your due diligence and look at their past credit history, their past payment history in detail to make sure that you don't get a bad tenant. Because right now, even if they are not paying you and you have to serve them, they, they do not uh, respond, then you have to start an action at the landlord tenant board which is backlogged six to eight months. More often than not, eight months. So technically you can have a tenant who is squatting, not paying your rent, eight months you're paying your own mortgage, and then maybe they'll take another month to get them out after the landlord tenant board sort of makes the decision. So you could be up to a year without rent and a lot of people can't afford to be in that situation. And I don't understand why it's so difficult. There are some bad landlords out there and we hear about it all the time. And let's get to that too. So as a tenant, if you are a tenant and your landlord tries to evict you without cause, then you do not have to leave, okay? Um, if you're not paying your rent, yeah, that's cause. If you are damaging the property, that's cause. If you have lied on your application, uh, that's cause. So basically, you know, your options are to be a good tenant. But if the landlord comes to you with a, an excuse that they're gonna sell the house, they're gonna renovate, you don't have to move, okay? A lot of sleazy landlords nowadays are using the renovation, saying they're gonna come in, they're gonna renovate, because all they wanna do is get the current tenant out because they can't raise the rent, and we'll get to that as well, um, past 2.5% per year, because that's the landlord tenant board's um, guidelines. So if they want to jack the rent up, they've been telling people, well, we're going to renovate or we're going to sell the house or a family member is moving in. Well, the only way you have to leave is if one, a family member, an immediate family member is moving in and they sign an affidavit saying they are moving in. Or two, they sell the house and the buyers are going to move in themselves. If they sell the house and the, it's an investor who buys it, guess what? You don't have to move. That investor has to assume the tenant very difficult to get a tenant out so if you are a buyer and you're buying a tenanted property just bear in mind that that tenant sometimes will not cooperate and they will not leave so it's very dicey in today's market because they might be paying fifteen hundred dollars in rent and if they have to move then they're looking at the same place paying twenty five hundred to three thousand in rent now so that is um what is going on in some instances where people have bought properties with tenants and the tenants just refuse to move. And now it's a process of delaying the purchase uh, and having the landlord go after them, which can take six to eight months as we know. So that's a problem if you're buying a property that is tenanted. There are ways to avoid it, a ways to work with it. Um, I myself work with a lot of tenanted properties and selling them. And one of the things to do is to approach the tenants first off and get an agreement with them to say, listen, we're gonna sell the property. Um, you have the option of staying, although I don't think an investor will buy it because the rent is below market value. So if they opt to pay more, that's their prerogative. But I give them the heads up and just let them know, chances are 
because of the, the current rate, we're not going to get an investor. We're going to get a actual person who wants to live in the property. So you will be forced to move regardless. The other way is to approach them and to cash for keys to say, listen, I'm going to sell the house. You know this is a situation because of your rent. I want to make it easier and fair and offer them $5,000 to say, you know, here's $5,000 if you can, to help you find a new place, if you can vacate the property. If they go with that, then that's great. Everyone's happy. Then you get an empty property that's going to sell for more than the $5,000 you just gave them because it doesn't have a tenant. So you can even increase that amount. Chances are it's going to sell for ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars more without a tenant in because we do know that tenanted properties do not look good. So if they move out, you can stage it, paint it, and then you'll get I don't know twenty, thirty thousand dollars more if you do some renovations. But if it's vacant, you'll definitely get ten to fifteen thousand dollars more. So that's something as a landlord. I know it hurts to say you're going to offer them five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars to move, but you'll make it up in the end. So that's my advice. I have a couple other tricks up my sleeves, working with tenants, being fair, and I always have a situation where everyone leaves happy. So if you have any questions about tenancy, tenanted properties, buying an investment property, I'd be happy to answer all your questions. I hope this was helpful for you. I know a lot of people do not know the rules of the Landlord Tenant Board. So go to the Landlord Tenant Board website, Google it, read up on the rules. Educate yourself if you're a tenant or if you're a landlord, and that'll help you. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Cheers.